Hey guys, it's Michelle with Florida Keys Birding, Reptiles, and Wildlife, and I just wanted to share some birding resources with you today. Um, we've been tracking um, migration, spring migration, through um, in my Facebook group, Florida Keys Birding, Reptiles, Wildlife, and Plants. Um, we talk a little bit about plants that are natives in the Keys and stuff you can plant for wildlife and stuff like that, but um, we do birding and uh, we talk, you know, reptiles, wildlife, whatever we find um, here locally in the Keys or the Everglades generally. Um, as you can see, you know, people post some uh, different um, different things here, you know, different things that they find and stuff like that. So, um, let's see. And I do post some events with Tropical Audubon Society, so you can see that. And then I've been doing during migration time, I try to post a daily birdcast update or whatever I find when I go out birding in the morning or the evening. Um, and I do post here, um, you know, what we find with BirdCast. So I'm going to talk a little bit about BirdCast and some other resources um, and where to find birding migration resources so that you can kind of know when you should be going out, where to go, where you're going to find them. It's not 100% science, but it is helpful. So let's take a look and see what we have. So BirdCast would be my first one to go to. That's usually the first one that I go to in the morning to kind of see what happened during the night since um, birds do migrate during the night. Uh, most of them do, not all of them do, but songbirds, warblers, my favorite. <laughs> so um, you can kind of track them to see what happened the night before in your area. We're here in South Florida, so, um, but some of their some of their newer tools uh, have been a little bit better since you can't see the Florida Keys light up very well um, for this BirdCast map, but you can kind of see South Florida. So let's kind of take a look real quick. Last night, um, last night was, as you can see, pretty active through Florida um, and South Florida here, but I didn't find a lot of birds when I went out birding this morning uh, or this evening. So it just means that they the winds flew them right over and they didn't stop here. So that does happen. So you can take a look at the BirdCast live BirdCast migration map. Um, and then you can also use their other migration tools. This one is pretty cool. Th this is my favorite. This is their newest, um, newest tool. Um, let's see. So if you type in Monroe County, Florida, you can type it by county. And then it gives you a real-time picture of how many birds passed over during the night. Um, so this is like right now. I guess some of them are leaving now. Yeah, because it's at sundown. So let's take a look at last night so you get a better idea. So like 123,500 birds crossed Monroe County last night. <laughs> my birds want to help so yeah so they they crossed over last night it shows um you know uh, when the birds took off it shows the flight direction so they were heading west as expected it shows the altitude how high they went really really cool stuff and this this shows the historic graph on the bottom of what's to be expected and then this one shows um Let's see, yeah, this is uh, the peak, you know, so it shows kind of where they've peaked and when they've peaked so far. Uh, a few nights ago on the 28th, we had a huge peak there, a number of birds. I think it was almost, almost 300,000 that passed over us. But again, I haven't seen a whole lot of activity that I would have been expected to see so far. So that means that they just, they're just going right over us and they're not landing, so sad tear but what can you do but this is cool you can you know kind of see and this is how many birds total have crossed and this is historic so the gray is the historic the green is like the live how many actually have so and then they even show you expected nocturnal migrants here which is pretty cool as well so 
Um, this is a cool new tool. This just came out like a week or two ago, I believe, so not even that long, but this is great. I'm looking forward to using this for fall um, this year when, when August comes. So um, they also have the migration alerts. So this is for Everglade City. I think I'm going to go here this weekend because if I change the location to, let's say, Key Largo, not so hot. We've got medium Tuesday, Wednesday. Let's see. Key West is even less exciting. You can't even see much going on here. Marathon. Same. Big Pine. Same. So, yeah. So, I mean, we're just kind of waiting to see. Hopefully, oh, even Homestead's a little bit better than us. <laughs> Sucks. Let's see if the Everglades... No, Everglades City comes up. I'm going to go here, for real. I'm going to go here on Saturday. <laughs> I'm going to go look for birds. Um, okay, so this is cool. Um, it shows high alert, low alert, medium alert. So you kind of know what days to go out because it kind of sucks when you go out and you don't find any. So you, you kind of do want like a predictor. Um, <clears throat> so those are the tools on BirdCast. And... Then you've got eBird, which is great. Um, you can see what birds have been spotted on eBird. Let me, okay, let me see. Um, okay, yeah. So you can kind of see what birds have been spotted in the area on eBird. So it shows like Marathon Airport, you know, Sombrero, Long Key, Fort Zach. I feel like they're getting a lot more at Fort Zach. Um, Grassy Key. Everglades because Everglades is part of Monroe County <clears throat> so you can kind of see who's pe what people are spotting where and where they're finding them and stuff like that so that's another good one another good one is Windy you might ask why you know why are we using a weather app right so especially in spring it's really important to know what's going on with the weather and the winds so as you can see on Saturday, Saturday looks like it could throw some birds our way because you see the winds change to southerly winds and it's kind of like pushing them from the west uh, east into Florida versus today, completely opposite. It's pushing them west, winds coming from the east. So they're pushing them away from us and we're not seeing that many birds right now. So, heading into Friday and Saturday, the wind direction changes, and this could mean birds for us. I'm only praying. <laughs> so, um, so that's another good one to use in the spring especially. In the fall, it's pretty much a given. We're going to see birds. Um, they have to come through Florida because we're like the last stop, but in the spring, it's, you know, give or take, so. And I can see I'm lagging from that. Okay. Um, another, uh, eBird has some other really good resources. So you can explore hotspots wherever you are. Oh, I think I have that open already. <clears throat> My bird's blowing kisses. Um, so you can see... You can put like all years, let's see, let's say current, current year, May, set a date. So you can set the date range and you can see what's been spotted, high numbers, low numbers, you know, species observed. You can see the chart over here. See, not that many today, not that many so far in May. We're kind of low all across the keys. Not so, not so great. Not so great. Um, yeah, we're not doing great here. Let's try April. Let's see if April was better. I think April was better. Mm, eh, still not that great. Not that great for South Florida this year. So yeah, you can take a look at this. You can see maybe who's had it better than us. So you can kind of know where you want to go. 
I always say the west coast is a little bit better here. You can see here, Fort DeSoto, that's a popular one. I heard that's the spot, I heard that's the place to go during spring. Um, but the Keys is great in the fall. Spring is marginal anyway. So that's another good um, migration tool that you can use with eBird. And then, let's see, I think I have a few of these open. Okay, well, this is another one that shows abcbirds.com. Shows you, this is kind of nice. It shows you BirdCast, eBird, this other one called Hummingbird Central, Journey North. I've never used these, but this looks, you know, it looks cool. You can never get enough <laughs> birding resources. Um, okay, I really like this tool from eBird. Um, this shows so much information. So this is for the ruby-throated hummingbird. You can pick um, the species up here. You can change the species. And you can see the habitats and when... See, this is like January, February, March, April, May. You can see the habitats of where they are right here. This is the, the type, where they are, what type of year, uh, I mean, what time of year in, let's say, Florida, for example. You can put it on any anything that you want. Um, so yeah, that's a really cool tool. And then this is my all-time favorite tool. This one is so good. Okay, so I have it on Black Paw Warbler right now. This is the um, abundance map, and this is the animated map. So let's say, so the, see the date is down here. See, this is like March, May 24th, and it, it gives you the, um, the abundance up here. The purple is like the most, and a little bit of yellow is the least. And it shows you exactly um, on each bird. So I have it on black paw warbler right now you can change the species up here and you can put it on any species that you want and it shows a migration pattern so let's go back I um, have it on May 24th so you can see it down here <laughs> my birds are being loud okay so right now in January all the black paw warblers are down here in South America and you can see them move on the move moving around April April 12th Looks like they first start to show up here. You can see a little bit light up on the screen on April 12th. Let's make it a little bit. Can we make it bigger? No, I guess not. Okay, so you can see they start to show up a little bit light up on April 12th. And then you can see by April 19th, it's really starting to light up. By April 26, really lighting up in Florida, especially the Keys. Usually, black paw warblers are here already. We saw a few in the lower Keys. Haven't seen many in the upper Keys. Um, that's kind of a surprise, you know. Usually, we always get them. Um, this year so far, we've seen lots of Cape May warblers. <laughs> it's just Cape May, Cape May, Cape May coming out of everywhere. And see, by May 3rd, they're just like supposed to be all over the place and they're just not here yet. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> they're supposed to really be here by May 10th, May 17th. They're still here, but they're really getting up north. You kind of watch the pattern. I keep wanting to point, like if you can see my finger. Um, but watch the pattern, how they're going north, north, north. And by the 24th, there's a couple left. And then by 31st, they're almost all completely gone. Just a little bit left here. And then boom, by June 7th, they're all the way up in Canada. So um, you can do this with any bird. This is so cool. I absolutely love this tool. This is like the best thing ever because I can track which bird is going to be here when. I mean, it's not 100%, but this is like historically when you can expect them. So... Um, as you can see though, let's keep going through summer. They're in Canada, 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 da 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 da. Geez, they're up in the like the Arctic Circle. <laughs> okay. August. Okay, let's see. Now, as you can see, they completely skip Florida in the fall. Look at that. Just a little bit, maybe right here, but for the most part. They almost completely skip Florida in the fall. In the spring they come through, but in the fall they make that and then they go all the way. Oh, did you like my sound effect? They go all the way 
all by themselves they come boom they look like they land in PR isn't that nice they must do that like a they must do a stop in PR oh in Puerto Rico that's cool now last fall some black paw warblers did get blown into the keys briefly for a few days I did get a picture of a couple of them so that was exciting and I didn't get to see them this year in spring not so far I'm still holding out but um, let me not get off into a tangent okay so <laughs> all right so you can also do um, abundance map you can do this you can look at seasonal you can look at um, non-breeding time only you can look at pre-breeding which would be spring um, you can look at breeding season which would be summer and post breeding which would be the fall and of course non-breeding would be <clears throat> the winter so you can look at all this information there's so much good stuff on here um, it's just everything that you would ever want to know <laughs> I love data and maps and I love gathering data and researching things so this is like love this is like great for me okay so I showed you already hot spots I had I had it right here um, you can track them I was tracking the black paw warbler hot spots you know down here so you can see this <sighs> sorry guys <sighs> is, is uh, late in the evening okay this is another one for South Florida um, helping tracking migration um, Cape Florida banding station is a nice blog that they do um, this is from April 21st the waiting game <laughs> so that's what they talked about the same thing they said uh, you know that we've had strong winds easterly winds forecast through the foreseeable future a bit disappointing as we enter through peak season there you have it folks so yeah spring not not so great this year spring of 2020 was amazing I saw so many birds it was so great um, but last year was a flop so far this year has been better than last year but not at all what I would have expected or hoped for um, and then my last is for South Florida is Tropical Audubon Society. They also have a Facebook page, but this shows all their events. You can see their full calendar, um, you know, and whatever they have on here to connect with Tropical Audubon. You know, they've got all their stuff on here. So guided tours and things like that. So pretty cool. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, let me show you Tropical Audubon's Facebook page. Uh, okay. Um, groups, groups, groups. Tropical Audubon Bird Board. <clears throat> so you can see um, what people are posting, what they've seen, which is nice. I always like to track and see what other people are finding. So, <laughs> Rooster, they're always here. But yeah, you can kind of see what everybody's posting, what everybody's finding here um, in Tropical Audubon Bird Board. You can also um, see that on my Facebook group. And like I said, I like to post during migration season almost daily what I find when I go birding um, in the afternoon or in the morning. And everybody kind of posts, you know, it's kind of mixed. People post uh, like underwater stuff and, you know, they post other things that they find and, you know, and some interesting articles and stuff like that. Um, but it's pretty good. I, I try to track migration fall and spring, you know, and then any other cool finds. So. So, um, I think that's about it. These are some good um, birding tools and tools for migration that you can um, track spring or fall. So I hope this was helpful for you guys, um, especially if you're living in South Florida. But these tools are also helpful for you if you don't live in South Florida. Um, you can use a lot of these tools to see what's going on. And if you live up north, you can still see what's going on in our groups or um, through some of these other resources because you can kind of see if the birds are here first then you know that they're headed your way so um all right thanks i hope you guys have a good night and i'll see you next time bye